Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kaylee Offmacher, and today I'll be presenting to you my project on a biopsychosocial approach to the recovery from traumatic brain injury in adults. Now, before I get started, I chose to focus my project on adults instead of children because um, there was already a lot of literature out there on the recovery from children and how it differs from adults. So I decided to focus my project on adults. I'd like to extend many thanks to my faculty mentors, Dr. Miller from biology, he's in the back in the blue, and Dr. Anderson, who couldn't be here today, for their guidance through this project. I'd also like to thank my INDS advisor, Professor McAlpine, as well as Dr. Freeland and the entire INDS department for all of their guidance as I develop this project. All right, I want everybody to take a moment and imagine themselves standing at the beginning of a race starting line. And we're going to make this a marathon. We're going to be forward ahead. 26.2 miles stand between you and the finish line. How are you going to run that race? For those of you who are like me, you've never run a race before, let alone a marathon, you might stand there at the starting line and think, what have I gotten myself into? If you are more experienced in running, or maybe you've trained a little bit longer, you might start off with a light jog and maintain it for the majority of the race until you eventually have to slow down and to a walk until you cross the finish line. Others of you might be those track stars or those cross country stars in school and you might start off with a sprint into the distance leaving me at the starting line and eventually slow down as you continue the race. Now keep this analogy in mind because I'm going to return to it later. The recovery from traumatic brain injury is a lot like running your race. So my first research, my research question what focused on the multiple factors that, had, that contributed to the recovery process from traumatic brain injury. And I had three different subcategories to this question. The first was integrating the biology, the psychology, and the sociology components, and how does it really affect recovery, and how do they affect one another. The second aspect of my project was that I focused on neurorehabilitation programs. I wanted to compare the traditional model of programs to the new comprehensive model, which has been declared to be an interdisciplinary program. I wanted to determine if it really was interdisciplinary. I also made suggestions based on the professional research in the field as to what can be added to neurorehabilitation programs already that can further the recovery process in traumatic brain injury in individuals. So, for my methodology, I conducted a literature review of approximately 40 different sources. I focused on scientific journals and psychological journal articles to focus my research on the different components that affected recovery. I also looked at the descriptions between hospital programs and looked at how they, inter how they developed their program and if it really was comprehensive and interdisciplinary in nature. I also synthesized some of these sources into a resource guide for caregivers, focusing on the social component of recovery as it's been the newly discovered aspect that contributes to the long-term prognosis of patients. So I focused on four different disciplines and fields for my research. The first being biology, now specifically neuroscience. There's an idea in neuroscience of brain plasticity. Brain plasticity is the brain's ability to take on functions of other brain areas, whether they be damaged or whether it's uh, shared between different brain areas. This idea of brain plasticity is directly influenced through neurorehabilitation programs because they look to directly influence this brain plasticity component in recovery by enriching the surrounding environment and improving upon the psychological health of the patient. In psychology, the injury of a, to the brain directly causes uh, issues with mental instability as well as emotional and behavior problems. So I wanted to look at how does this direct uh, trauma in biology affect the psychology and functioning of an individual. I also used the resiliency model from psychology to focus on coping skills that an individual has and how they use it in terms of the recovery process. In sociology, the idea of sociology focuses on the what what components of the environment influence individuals and how do these individuals react within that specific environment. Macaulay and Associates, and I'll get into his research a little bit more, focused on how the support systems influence the recovery process. And they found through their research that the perceived social support network, or what the patient perceives the support that they're receiving to be, directly impacts the recovery process in either a positive or a negative manner. 
The medical field is a way that I integrated all of the different disciplines that I just explained to you. Through neuro rehabil rehabilitation programs, they look to address each component of recovery in biology, psychology, and sociology. And the new comprehensive model effectively does this by creating a patient-centered focus of recovery, which is the new model that medicine is trying to work towards. So remember that race I had you run in the beginning. Well, there are three possible scenarios that I listed for you. Now, there, you could have run the race differently, but each of these scenarios represents the most common outcomes of traumatic brain injury recovery. The first, the first possible outcome was wondering what have you gotten yourself into, and st stopping before you even started the race. These represent the individuals whose recovery seems to make very little strides. They seem to not make a lot of recovery within the first three months, which is considered the critical window of recovery. This doesn't mean that the prognosis is grim, although it can lead to uh, either determination of brain death or vegetative state, but it means that the recovery process may take off in a later period, as in after a year. The second scenario was starting and maintaining a light jog throughout the race. This scenario represents the possibility when an individual recovers from traumatic brain injury that they will make small incrementing steps towards the recovery process. They may plateau in this progress or they may continue to go on in after the ex critical window of three to six months. Now the third scenario is m the most common with traumatic brain injury and the fact that they start off with a sprint. They seem to make incredible strides in their recovery process, but at a certain point, usually at about six months, the recovery plateaus and they don't seem to recover any further. And even in some individuals, they seem to move backwards in their race instead of forwards. So this brings me to my key points from my research. Because I focused on the different disciplines and how they integrate with one another, I identified multiple factors that contribute to the long-term prognosis of patients. Neurorehabilitation programs is one way of creating an interdisciplinary approach within the medical field, but it, looks, it differs from traditional models because it focuses on the social aspect of recovery. It looks to influence the social integration and social skills that an individual gains during the rehabilitation process so that they can use it to better themselves after discharge. The recovery is a lifelong process, so when I didn't have you finish your race, I forgot to tell you that traumatic brain injury recovery never ends up finishing. They never reach that finish line. The stigma associated with a six-month plateau is just that, a social stigma. It doesn't actually exist unless if you let it exist. Incorporating an enriching environment, a appropriate medical treatment, and uh, a supportive environment surrounding you, you can move past the six-month plateau. <coughs> because my project is in, needs an interdisciplinary approach, it's important to highlight the fact that the medical field has already attempted this interdisciplinary model through comprehensive neurorehabilitation programs. A comprehensive program has been identified as having a 30% increase in recovery, according to Sarah Journey and her associate, associates. Now this recovery is uh, a subjective account. So success is determined based on the increase in physical functioning determined by the Glasgow scale, uh, decrease in physical uh, awareness of symptoms through MRI and CAT scans, and a positive evaluation of the psychology of an individual. Regardless, neurorehabilitation programs in a comprehensive nature are an appropriate interdisciplinary approach. So I focus on multiple different integration strategies, as, according to Miller and Boisman C. I focus on a, uh, advancing through checks and balances, uh, reasoning through analogies, and developing complex and multicausal interactions. But I decided to focus on my analogy for you today, because when I first started thinking about my project, I knew I wanted to incorporate an analogy. And everybody I talked to asked me, well, what is your analogy? And up until about two months ago, I had no idea what my analogy was going to be. I realized as I was researching that, inter that integration techniques don't just pop out and you slap a stamp on them. Sometimes they have to come to you over time. And I realized after I finished all of my research that the traumatic brain injury recovery is like a race. It didn't occur to me as I was researching, it occurred to me after. So the fact that the recovery process is exemplified through a race emphasizes the multiple different factors that can contribute to the recovery process. 
As you're running your race, you have biology, psychology, and sociology all playing a part in how you start and finish your race. In biology, it focuses on how did you train for this race? Did you diet appropriately? Do you have a natural physical ability to run this race? Like me? No, I don't, so I can't. But, in, but these biological factors also contribute to traumatic brain injury recovery because it focuses on age and the severity of, of symptoms and of the severity of the injury itself. These are the first determining factors of if a person is going to be able to make a positive long-term prognosis in the future. In psychology, when you're running your race, you have to have a confidence in yourself to be able to finish it. If you don't have confidence in yourself, most likely you're not going to finish it. You're going to give up before you start. You also have to be able to co cope with the stress of physically running the race, as well as with the psychological impact of, I've got a lot of time left to finish this race. How am I going to do it? When you're running this race in traumatic brain injury recovery, this focuses on how do you, how do you cope with your surroundings? Do you have the support of individuals? And if you don't, how are you going to cope without them? as well as having confidence in the recovery process, having faith that, yes, you can move past the six-month plateau, you're not going to be a statistic. In sociology, when you're running your race, it focuses on the support that you get from others, that crowd cheering you on the sidelines. You can do it. Go, run, run. That's the same exact thing that happens with recovery from traumatic brain injury. You need that crowd by your side. You need to be able to hear the people that you love and who support you saying, yes, we can do this and we can do it, not, not only just you, but together. Each of these hills and valleys that you run through your race represent the plateau periods and the excel periods through your recovery process. And each of these are equally important as you finish your race. So I'd like to make two suggestions that I found through research based on the field uh, professionals within the field. The researchers I met, mentioned earlier was Macaulay and his associates. He identified that there is a significant decline in the psychological health of patients. So he suggested that there should be more services offered through rehabilitation programs that address psychological health after discharge. I also focused on O'Connor's um, suggestion because he wants resources to be made more available to caregivers. He recognizes that there is a significant burden in treating and, the, and caring for somebody recovering from traumatic brain injury, so he wants there to be support for both individuals because he knows that the support for a caregiver positively impacts the psychological and physical functioning of the patient that's recovering. So in conclusion, I wanted to bring you back to my research question. What are the biopsychosocial factors that influence recovery? So this requires an interdisciplinary approach, and traumatic brain injury is easily approached through the analogy of a race. Thank you. project on sports, I wanted to focus on the running the race itself and the different factors that come into how you're going to finish your race. So not necessarily focusing on the on what specifically requires to, to in a sports aspect, but people who don't normally um, compete in sports activities, they can decide all of a sudden to run a race. And most of them eventually finish the race in however long it takes them, but the point is that they finish it. And I wanted to use that analogy to describe how, how one person can go from not having any experience to running and finishing a race and how that equates to the traumatic brain injury recovery process. Because people who are recovering from traumatic brain injury, they didn't expect the traumatic brain injury to occur. They were just thrown into the situation. So it's a matter of how can you make the best of your situation and what factors can feed into that to encourage the recovery process. 
Just following on that, it, it's interesting uh, to see the capstones where there are these two different types of interdisciplinary approaches. So there's the approach, there's the connection you made across disciplines that helps you understand the significance of the problem or the complexity of the problem. And then there's, there are the claims by experts that their approach is interdisciplinary. And you mentioned that briefly with the comprehensive neurorehabilitation mm -hmm. programs claim to be interdisciplinary. And do those, do their claims resemble any of the bridging strategies we've talked about? They do. The ones that are successful um, <coughs> represent aspects from all of the bridging strategies that are discussed in interdisciplinary studies. Um, most specifically, developing uh, complex and multi-causal explanations I focus on in my paper. Um, they look at how these, how these um, <coughs> disciplines really interact and how to best approach them with, as they treat individuals, developing that patient-centered focus. Now, the, the comprehensive programs that don't work, um, for example, I studied the program through Johns Hopkins Hospital. They claim that they have an interdisciplinary program, but they didn't describe, at least from what I could tell, how they address the social component, especially after discharge. And there's been a lot of literature out there that explains that after discharge is where you see a lot of decline in recovery. So it becomes a really important aspect of being interdisciplinary to focus on both during admission and after. Yes, in the back. So you said that the six month plateau is an illusion. Yes. What evidence do you have that the six month plateau, I mean, why do we even think there's such a thing if in fact it's just an illusion? Well, the first idea of the six-month plateau arrived in the 1960s when traumatic brain injury recovery was first focused on. And they decided that there was this plateau period because nobody, from what they could tell, was making any leaps and bounds in their recovery. They didn't consider the small aspects of recovery to be significant enough to consider for the recovery process. And they didn't understand the social component to recovery, so they only were looking at the biology and the psychology aspects of it. So when I say that the plateau period is an illusion, it's because now we've got more information about the recovery process. We have identified that there's also a social component that directly impacts the biology and the psychology of a patient and how that is influenced in the recovery process. Does that answer your question? In the very back. Okay, so you, uh, you, you mentioned um, the importance of like family and loved ones being a part of like the coping mechanism of the injury. But I'm just curious, um, in your research, would it be relevant and have you looked at the psychological impact that that support role would take on the person that's helping the injured or coaching them along? Absolutely. I'm really glad that you brought that point up because that's an entire section of my paper. Um, when I, yes, when I was researching, I looked at the idea that support systems can positively affect the recovery process of an individual. But when I was researching, I also found that they have a negative impact if they provide a, a neglectful or an unsupportive environment. And that usually is a result of the burden that they feel because they're doing all of the care. Um, it's, it's shown um, that about 60% of the family structures change due to the caregiving process of an individual with a DBI. So this dramatic change in the, in the family structure causes a lot of stress within the family members. And if they don't have a strong foundation to base that support off of, then they're going to negatively impact the recovery process instead of positively. Dr. So how can healthcare providers be trained in this interdisciplinary approach? Because it's not the kind of thing that I would suspect that most doctors, for instance, are get get in their, their medical training. So, did you come across anything in your reading about suggestions for how this sort of interdisciplinary approach could be brought into medical training, or is it or are people thinking that way? I think the idea behind the healthcare system is that they are intending to communicate appropriately with other professionals within the field. So when a person goes into the recovery process, they see a physical therapist, they see their, their primary physician that's in charge of their case, they see occupational therapists, speech therapists, and a psychologist. And those are just to begin naming a few. And I think the idea is that each of these individuals developing a treatment plan and talking about 
their plans with one another is the interdisciplinary approach, but that's more of a multidisciplinary approach. So I didn't find any specific suggestions within the literature itself, but based on an interdisciplinary background that I've gained, I can suggest um, the fact that they need to learn to better incorporate the treatments into one solid plan.